I officially finished my reread of Project Blue. So I'm gonna get into just like 10 disjointed thoughts that I had about this story while I was reading it because I did take, you know, a required break. I found it interesting because while I tried to read it as a reader, and that's what you, the whole purpose of the break is, is to have, you know, enough time so that you can read it not as the writer brain and not trying to edit everything. And while I did do that pretty well, there were some instances where I actually think it helped to have that writer brain still kind of activated because I knew enough about the story that when I hadn't totally hinted at something well enough or when I'd over hinted or even when I'd perfectly hinted and I was like, ooh, I know what's to come. No one else does, but I do. So it was it was just an interesting experience, which I haven't had when I've reread other works because I've given them much, much longer. Not necessarily on purpose. <laughs> Now, because I'm traveling so much, I actually had a full, like, a four-day break of reading it when I was in Vegas with my mom and going to see Elton John and all of that fun stuff. But that means that I didn't read it straight through. So it makes it a little bit more challenging when you're not reading it every day. So my plan is to actually spend a full day totally reading the entire thing. I haven't figured out which day that's gonna be yet because it's kind of hard to take a full day when you're traveling so much, but I'ma find a way. This guy deserves it. I'm gonna try and do it before I get my beta reader feedback and that way I can have all of my questions and that's gonna be something else I'm gonna talk about because I'm just, at this point, I think I'm just documenting this whole process, but I'm going to come up with a list of questions after my reread and I already gave them questions to think about while they're reading the story, but now that I've read it, I think I can ask some more pointed questions. So, Okay, that's future stuff. Let's get to my thoughts immediately after reading this story. Oh, and for those of you who may not be aware, this is my young adult pirate fantasy novel that I'm working on. That's gonna be important somewhere down the line, perhaps in the issues that I'm talking about, because of course, young adult has its own medley of genre specific things. Yeah. <laughs> So in no real order, the first thought I have is that the captain of this effing ship needs to do something other than frickin' smirk. He smirks all the dang time. It's like, do something else with your face, buddy. And by that, I mean write her, me, give him something else to do with his face. <laughs> The second thought is that I'm actually impressed that even before beta reader feedback, that the plot of this novel actually makes sense. And I'm willing to concede that part of the reason it makes sense is because I'm the writer and I'm kind of, you know, all knowing. I know exactly why all the characters are doing what they're doing. That makes it a little bit easier to see the plot for what it is. But this is the farthest along I've gotten where I haven't been like, oh, that's a huge gaping plot hole. No, there are individual scenes where I'm like, that definitely needs some more fleshing out, some more explaining, or to be basically just written better so that it makes sense for future events, but there's no actual plot holes that I can see. And this is why beta reader feedback is going to be so important because they may come up with something that I've never seen. I never would have thought of. I'm hoping that doesn't happen but I'm curious if it will. I will go ahead and give one example of something that I already know I need to flesh out and make more sense, is that one point early on in the book, Annalise and the main character and the captain of the ship come to a conclusion that they're, an, they're at an impasse. They both kind of have dirt on each other and are willing to share that dirt, even if it means the death of the other person. But because it's like mutually assured destruction, they say they're at an impasse. I know why I did what I did. And I know why the next scene does not reflect that impasse they agreed upon, more or less, but that needs to be fixed. <laughs> so it's those kind of things where I just need a couple clarifying remarks in the next scene for it all to piece together and make sense, but the overall structure of the story, I think I did pretty good. The third thing is that I actually had full on scenes where I was reading it, I was like, oh shit, I crushed it. <laughs> you know, where you're reading it and you're like, wow, this is actually, like, this is good. This is making me feel things. This is, and it's beautifully written. Like there were just, a, there were some scenes where I was like, I can't believe that I have created this, that that was a product of my brain. That is amazing. And there were more of those that I thought, because you know, sometimes you always kind of happen upon a nugget of greatness. There were just more nuggets in this than I thought there were going to be. And that's awesome. Uh, the fourth point is that that being said, there were also a ton of times where I was like, oh my God, that is awful. <laughs> like that is just bad writing. <laughs> Almost hard to get through in some circumstances where I was just like, I kind of get what I was trying to say, but I, 
The good thing here is that I had so many of those awesome scenes and awesome places where I wrote really well that it makes me feel better about all the times where it wasn't good. Like, and hopefully I will be able to elevate it up to this level that I enjoyed more. That is what editing and revising is for. <laughs> the fifth thing is actually something that I had mentioned in my first video when I was laying out my thoughts before I reread, and it's something that I knew I was gonna struggle with and I was worried about, honestly. So it's kind of, it's good in that I think I already knew it was going to be an issue that needed fixing. It's bad that after rereading it, it is something that I'm like, yeah. And I will have to wait on beta reader feedback because again, I didn't read it completely straight through in one sitting. But basically the main character is struggling with the decision she made and not feeling the full force of her consequences the way that she knows she should or the way that she knows other people think she should, where she actually feels this way. So she waffles between the guilt of not feeling what other people think and then being like, screw you, but then also being like, no, sometimes I do feel bad. It's a fine line to walk and I think it's an important point because I think as we're growing older we kind of you know it's kind of the coming of age thing where you realize what's important to you may not be important to everyone else and I think that's a point worth making and definitely something central to this character a la pirates in general kind of are always walking this line of moral ambiguity but I don't think I did it well I don't think I clarified it well enough in certain scenes and I'm worried it comes across as like super wishy-washy when that's truly not this characterization. So yeah, yeah. The sixth thing is also a dumb one in that I realized that like halfway through the book for some of it, I just like change character names. Now I, the writer, know that this far off minor character whose name I mentioned once, it doesn't truly matter, but also, these poor beta readers are gonna be so confused. And it's something that when I was rereading it the first however many times, I did not catch because I needed to let it rest, but I caught it now and I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> but at one point, I have the sister's names early on. The main character leaves her home island, pirates. When they're referenced again, I don't remember their names. So I just put capital other capital sister. <laughs> the seventh thing is, that I didn't realize I did this. And this is what's always like kind of infuriating, but also like mind blowing when you're reading your own work is that you find like ticks that you didn't know you had. And so I learned about the smirking one. I learned about the, like I make characters turn around a lot. They're basically like dancing 24 seven, I swear. They're just moving about. I did not know that I used the phrase eyes met so much. Their eyes met. Her eyes met his. He met her eyes with blank. Like, <sighs> and it's so funny because you don't realize that you're doing it. And by funny, I mean, it's awful. <laughs> The eighth thing to note is that I'm very happy with how I nailed some of these characters. Annalisa, nailed her. The captain, nailed. Graham, nailed. Kristoff, nailed. Quinta, nailed. Annalisa's dad, who, <laughs> actually don't have a name for, so maybe he's not as nailed as I thought, but his character, nailed. And that's awesome because that's always a point of concern is like, are these characters legit? Do they seem like fully rounded characters? Um, the counter to that is that I do have some characters where I'm like, oh, I don't think I did that with them. Matthias, who is a major character in this and someone I mentioned that I was worried about and freaking Matthias. I'm also worried that the sisters are kind of like throwaways. And by saying I'm worried about it, I mean, I know that they're throwaways. I did not do like near enough development on them in the later scenes. And as for the Queen of Monsoria, where Annalisa is originally from, I want to make it clear to the reader that it's Annalisa's viewpoint of the queen that kind of paints her as evil and that she's not necessarily evil, but I don't think I did that. So that needs to be fixed too. The ninth realization is that while I do think I nailed the structure of the plot, I want Annalisa to struggle just a little bit more in the beginning. And she struggles a lot. She struggles a lot throughout the novel with different things, but there's this point in the beginning that I think could really lend more to the development of the character if I just pushed it 
a little bit harder. Not a lot because I think it could be overdone, but just a little bit more. And I also need to work on some early world building. And I think there should be a way that I can combine those two things, but it has to take place in a whole new scene probably. So I need to figure that out. <laughs> this is a great thing that I would not have realized had I not reread the story with semi-fresh eyes. So again, very glad that I did that. I will keep preaching that it's important to wait a month before you reread your story. And the 10th and final point is that I'm still just so freaking excited about this story. The reread only made me more excited and actually like made me feel a little bit better about the work that I gave my beta readers. Cause while I know it's going to be a little bit hard to get through in some places, I do think the overall story that I'm telling them is one that's really interesting and one that's good and I still really like it because I love pirates and yeah. And as I was rereading it, I had moments where I was like, oh my gosh, yes! And like, oh my gosh, no, for these characters. So I think that's what you need. I'm still like, I'm even more enthusiastic about this project and that's such an awesome feeling I was worried I wasn't going to have. <laughs> and I think it's definitely going to propel me forward to continue working hard on fixing it and also abate some of my fears while I'm waiting for my beta readers <laughs> because I was getting nervous. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Please comment down below and let me know what are some phrases that you found yourself writing over and over in your story. And especially if you had to reread your novel to figure it out. If there were any surprises, I would love to hear about it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Oh, that's kind of a spoiler. Because while I know it's going to be a little hard to get through and it just fell. <laughs>